I've never seen anything so disgusting in all my life. I'll tell you something. He's staring at them. I think he's looking at us. I think we're being picked up. Oh, it's too awful. <laughs> Can you believe it? I don't know how they can let creatures like that in here. <laughs> really. Thirty-five years old, Mr. Vale. Why are you such a derelict, such a piece of human junk? The answer's simple. You're a scanner, which you don't realize. And that has been the source of all your agony. But I will show you now that it can be a source of great power. Let them in. Thank you. 
I would like to scan all of you in this room, one at a time. I must remind you that the scanning experience is usually a painful one, sometimes resulting in nosebleeds, earaches, stomach cramps, nausea, sometimes other symptoms of a similar nature. There's a doctor present, Dr. Gatineau. I know that you've all been prepared for this, but I thought I'd just remind you just the same. Uh, there is one other thing. No one is to leave this room once the demonstration has begun. At this point, I'd like to call for volunteers. Anyone, doesn't matter. Specific, something that will not breach the security of your organization and that you will not object to having disclosed to this group. Something uh, personal, perhaps. All right. Yes, I have something. Do I have to close my eyes? It doesn't matter. All right, yes, I have something.
want you to come with me. I didn't do anything. I said I want you to come with me. Come on. Got no, come with us. Down there, quick! Move it! Get out! Give him a shot of ephemeral! Come on! <laughs> That serve him right. Why the hell do they have to send us to the old factory? If this guy's a scanner, they don't want him down to Central. They're afraid of him. He's a scanner. Hey, where's security too? It's moving up fast on the left. Hey man, what's happening? Ray! What the hell's the matter with you? You gotta pull back behind him, man. Come on! Ray, I'm gonna kill you if you don't do it. Last night, we at Consec chose to reveal to the outside world our work with those telepathic curiosities known as scanners. The result? Six corpses and a substantial loss in credibility for our organization. So, this morning, we have a new director of internal security, Mr. Braden Keller. Thank you. Mr. Trevin. Gentlemen, we're in the business of international security. We deal in weaponry and private armies. We do not trade in fantasy and pipe dreams. Let us leave the development of dolphins and freaks as weapons of espionage to others. Now, with all due respect to Dr. Paul Ruth, 
I recommend that we drop our scanner program immediately, sir. Hmm? Dr. Ruth, what's your response? Mr. Keller, who composed our audience last night? We had 25 financial and political VIPs from all over North America. Were these VIPs carefully screened? The screening process used was very sophisticated, yes. And yet an assassin managed to infiltrate this group? Yes. And killed six of our people? Yes. How did he kill them? We have reason to believe he used scanning techniques. Then do you suggest, uh, Mr. Keller, that this highly skilled assassin, very deadly, who embarrassed us all in front of the community we were trying to impress, was himself a scanner? We believe so, yes. Well, that gentleman is uh, my response, the weapons capability of these uh, um, telepathic... Uh, Curiosities? Is obvious. If I may, doctor... Your program is based on a list of 236 known scanners, is it not? It is. Of that number, of that number, how many are now working with us? As of last night, none. Well then, we don't even have a program to drop, do we? It shouldn't be very painful for anyone. Concept surveillance has gradually lost contact with all the names on our list. And I, I submit that this, this is not an accident. I think we've lost them to a program far in advance of ours. Yeah. Yeah. I think you might elaborate, Doctor. In my study of the situation, I've come to the conclusion that there is a scanner underground developed in North America. It has an organization, it's well motivated. And it has a leader. Now that's ridiculous, Doctor. You can't get two of them to sit in the same room together without going berserk. You're making a very provocative allegation, Dr. Ruth. Who controls this group? If you study the descriptions of this report, you will find that you probably met him last night. His name is Daryl Rebuck. And he was on our list. This is total fiction. Mr. Trevelyan, I... A moment, Mr. Keller. What do you suggest out here? Eliminate the competition. How? Contact a scanner who is as yet unknown to the underground, convert him to our cause, and then send him out to infiltrate the underground. Convert him, Doctor? How? They're all pathetic social misfits. Unstable? Unreliable? That is because their unique gifts are not understood, Mr. Keller. There is one point about which there is no doubt at all, and that is the concept was attacked. For our own peace of mind, we have to retaliate in some way. And I think Dr. Ruth's suggestion is a very interesting one. Except that we don't have any scanners left to send into the field. As a matter of fact, I do have one still unaffiliated. Very special one. I don't suppose you speak much? No. It's not surprising. With all those other voices in your head, how can you hear your own voice? How can you develop a self, a personality? How do you feel? I feel crystal clear. How do you like it? Clarity. I'm not sure. I think I'm a bit afraid. Why? I feel so exposed. I can hear myself. You hear your own voice? Yes. Good. You called me a scanner. What is that? Freak of nature, born with a certain form of ESP, a derangement of the synapses, which we call telepathy. Could be a disease, possibly. 
or a result of radiation, we don't really know why. Who are you? My name is Dr. Paul Ruth. I'm a psychopharmacist by trade, specializing in the phenomenon of scanners. The woman in the shopping mall, what were you doing to her? I wasn't doing anything to her. It was her. She was forcing me to what? To think about her. Fifty people that were in this room, they appeared to disturb you. Why was that? They talked too loud. They talked and they talked. Really? I didn't see their lips move. Did you? No, it was the other voices, the ones without lips. They were drowning me. I couldn't stop them. The injection gave you the needle. What happened to the voices? They stopped. The drug is called ephemeral. It's a scan suppressant. It does nothing when it's given to ordinary human beings. When given to a scanner, it prevents the flow of telepathy. It stops the voices. It can help you. How do you know these things? It's my profession. This is Mr. Keller. Will my car be ready this evening? Tell us what you did, please, Daryl. I drilled a hole in the head. Where? It's kind of obvious. <laughs> right here. Why did you do it, Daryl? Why did you drill the hole? You wanted to let the pressure out. You wanted to let something out of your head? <laughs> Lily, I'm so smart. I can't get anything past you again. You wanted to let something out of your head? Uh, what? People. There are people in my head. My friend for Daryl. You mean voices? Put over the hole. It's a door. Put an eye on the door so they won't know it's a door and they can't get back in because they'll see the eye, you know. Do you think that will fool them? Sure, sure will. I mean, I mean sure will, you know. I mean, if that's the only way to... No! That's me, isn't it? As you were, without ephemeral, without guidance. Is he still like that? Worse. How could he be? At the age of 22, he was extremely self-destructive. Now, at the age of 35, he is simply destructive in many ways. Cameron, he 
if he's your enemy and mine. But I don't even know him. He knows you. Somehow he was able to gather a master list of all the scanners who were ever born. He sought them out one by one, asked them to join him in an insane crusade to destroy the society that created him. And me? He was looking for you, but I found you first. That's why you can help me. I don't understand. All the scanners didn't agree to join him were murdered. These murders represent a loss to mankind of the most spectacular human beings that ever walked the face of this planet. Now you, Cameron, your brothers and sisters can bring a, a glory and a brilliance to our society that has never been seen before. We must stop Revok now. Sec are not ready to give up their program. Paul Ruth came up with a secret weapon. What? Someone you've been looking for, I think. Scanner. Calls himself Cameron Vale. I've seen him. And Ruth knew exactly where to find it. He's in indoctrination right now. Can he do anything? What kind of shape is he in? He seems to function. But there's nothing to worry about. He's weak. Very weak. Welcome to our little psychic gymnasium. Cameron Vale. Yoga master, Dieter Thomas. Miss Tubbs has kindly consented to be your psychic sparring partner. He has publicly demonstrated on many occasions that by the power of his will, he can control his heart rate, his alpha wave rhythm, and many other supposedly uncontrollable functions of the human body. Are we ready? Just about. Proceed. If you'd be kind enough to sit facing this gentleman here. I want you. I want you to slowly release your scan, slowly with focus. I wanted to touch his heart, but not his brain. Do you understand? Telepathy is not mind reading. It is the direct linking of two nerve systems separated by space. I want you to make a link from your brain to his heart. I want your brain to make his heart beat fast. Now, if his heart beats too quickly, then he will take over control of his heart and slow it down. Don't worry about him. All you have to do make his heart beat faster, fast, fast. Ah! Uh, uh. 
Find your scan. Bend it. Stop him. Bend it. Bend it. You were right, Dr. Ruth. It was easy. This man's name is Benjamin Pierce. And these photographs were taken in a prison for the criminally insane. Here's another one. This is a plaster cast of him at present on display in the Crostic Art Gallery. He's our only lead, a known scanner who may or may not be part of Revox Underground. Why was he in prison? We tried to kill his entire family. His father, his sister, mother. At the age of 10, it was in 1958, a few years later, he was uh, released, uh, what do they say here? Uh, Rehabilitation through art. Incredible power, doesn't he? Power? Oh, yes, he does. I'm an acrostic. I'm pleased you came to my gallery. Are you an aficionado of Benjamin Peel? I'm interested in buying this piece for my apartment in Paris. Yes? But I don't think it'll work out unless I can get to meet the artist first. I'm afraid no. I hope it won't prejudice you against acquiring this piece. But I would lose Benjamin Pierce for good if I even approached him with the idea. You see, it's part of our agreement. He will not meet his public. Maybe you could just tell me where he lives. Then I could approach him myself. And you wouldn't be involved. I'm afraid I can't. Then maybe you could just think about where he lives. Excuse me. I'm suddenly feeling ill. Arna, what's the matter? Are you all right? I better be all right. Come on, Arnold. Let me take you back to your office. You gotta lie down. That's it. Take my arm. Benjamin Pierce? 
Why don't you leave me alone? I need some help. You're the only one that could give it to me. Is that right? Me? Yes. <laughs> then I think you're in big trouble, chum. I've heard you know a man named Daryl Revick. Who are you? I was told you were coming to pay me a visit, Mr. Bale. How did you know that? I didn't know that. Well, I have friends. I don't want them, but I have them. Scanner friends? What do you mean by that? I'm one of you. You're one of me? Yes. You know what I think? I think you better tell me what you really want. The voices in my head. They're driving me crazy. How do you stop them? Your voices. My art. My art keeps me sane. I don't have anything like this. That's why I have to find Daryl Revan. You, my friend, are a liar. Get out. Look, I'm not leaving here until you tell me where I can find Daryl Revick. No? All right. Well then, I'll get out.
Good evening, sir. Can I help you? Are there any messages for me? Your name, sir? Cameron Vale. And your room number? 802. Yes, this package is for you, sir. My name is Cameron Vale. I've got to talk to Kim Oberst. Come on in. Oh, God. We killed Ben Pierce. Yes. Come on upstairs. Wait here a sec. Kim, whoever got to Ben Pierce is dead. This guy's name is Cameron Vale. I scanned him. He's for real. Is there when it happened? Sit down. I know you. You were at the gallery. You were looking for Pierce. I need help. So, so 
frightening to lose yourself. So frightening to lose yourself. To lose your will to the group will. To lose yourself. 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 To lose yourself.
all right here for a while. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's finished. And nothing can stop Revik now. We were the dream. And he's the nightmare. There's still us. I can help you. We can destroy Revik together. <laughs> you? You're barely human. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but you don't understand. You don't know Revik. You don't know how evil he is. How powerful he is, you don't know anything. What are you doing? We must have something that will lead us to Revok. Us? No, not...
room with telephone calls, sir. Take it, Wendy. Yeah. It's Cameron Vale. We missed you. I've made a breakthrough to Revic. I want to come in. I want to bring you an informant from Revic's group. That's excellent. I'll arrange for you to be brought in. Can you, can you call me back in about 10 minutes? OK. Goodbye, Dr. Ruth. All set? 10 minutes. serious problem. Bale's coming in. He says he has an informant from your group. Now, is that possible? No, he's lying. Then why is he coming in? Maybe he's homesick. Look, Vale must know something, or his informant does. It could be about me and you. Then you'd better be the one to interrogate the informant. And Ruth will talk to Vale. I won't be able to prevent that. If Ruth finds out anything, anything at all, kill him. Really? I thought you didn't want kill Ruth him. to me. Really? Injection of ephemeral. Well, Bryn, no apologies, no vote of confidence, and my man brought back the goods. Why don't we save the party until we've unwrapped the presents? It won't take long. I, I have a way with these creatures. I know that. So does Trevelyan. That's why he's asked me to take the informant. You can do what you like with Vail. Very well, that won't work. Police state tactics simply won't work, sir. Really? Why don't you send a letter to the board about that, Doctor? I'm sure they'd love to hear from you. sure that the needles I gave you both were harmless. Don't worry. She'll be able to protect herself if there's any problem. Why did you do that? Gesture of trust to your friend. I have my own methods. I have nothing to hide. Nothing at all to hide. Not even the right program? The what? 
Do you know of a drug laboratory called Biocarbon Amalgamate? Oh, yes, of course. I, I founded it in 1942. You? Well, I sold it to Concept. That's why I'm here. Let's say that we have a uh, genial working relationship. Do you know what that lab does? It's been so long since so I've been in touch with them. Uh, as far as I know, they they make some sort of uh, chemical weaponry, among other things. It manufactures ephemeral for Daryl Revick. It may even be run by Daryl Revick. That's impossible. No. I was there. I took the place of one of Revick's men. I saw Revick in the control room. The production of ephemeral is computerized. It's being manufactured and sent out in huge tankers. Ephemeral has been sent out. Sent out where? The answer is in your own computer. The program that controls everything is called RIPE, and it's a CONSEC program. That means that someone here at CONSEC is a traitor. And that someone is working with Revic. I want you to access the right program. I do not have CONSEC computer clearance. Neither do I. But you do have a nervous system. And so does a computer. You can scan a computer as you would another human being. Surprise. You're very attractive. <laughs> okay, let's do it the formal way. Your name? Kim Oberst. Your name? Not relevant. Tell me everything you know about Darl Rivik's organization. Before I tell you anything, I want to know how you're going to protect me. When Revik finds out that I've come here, he's going to try and kill me. Miss Obris, your best protection is to tell us everything we need to know. As soon as you do, Revik will cease to be a threat to anyone. Not good enough. Revik's people are everywhere. And that scares me. To be honest with you, Kim, the only one you should be afraid of is me. Why should I be afraid of you? I came here of my own free will. Because... I know you're not what you say you are. I want to see something else. Listen to me. Listen to me. Now I have acquaintances in Revix group. They tell me, they tell me that you have never been one of them. Why are you here? Why?
goodbye, Kim. Kim, where is she? Where is she? This is more important. No! No. This is more important. The computer is more important. Access the right program. More important. But the right program is the past. Therefore, to access program is to access the past. No. Access the past. Access past. Security! Scan us. Find them and kill them. Put it on the air! Find them and kill them. Mustn't happen again. It's always been there inside me, lurking away, sucking out my joy, rotting my successes. Cameron. Oh, Cameron. I have a way with you, Cameron. Mustn't happen again. Right. Keller tried to kill me. Keller? Then he's the one. Please. There's blood on my hand. 
Secure the computer room. Not in my hand. What's going on? What the hell is going on? It's the scanners, sir. They're out. Is this the only way we can do it? If we don't plug into the computer now, they're going to reprogram it. that someone has reprogrammed the computer in such a way that the right program is locked away inside. Somebody not only threw away the key, he plugged the keyhole. Try it again. Try it again. into it as we're going to get. Hey, Lee. Punch up your internal monitor. Access is IM863. Why? What is it? Someone's inside this thing right now getting the right program. How can this happen? This room is max security. We're plugged into the telephone system. Anybody who has the proper series of access codes could get in here long distance. I mean, someone's getting that right now? system and the computer's nervous system are joined together. He's scanning it. I want to cripple them both. Or maybe kill them both. How? Well, I don't know if it's what you want, but I could override the max security self-destruct. It's designed to blow all the circuits in case of anticipated possession of data by unauthorized and unfriendly forces. Do it now. Sir, that would entail a total loss of all data, all programs within the Consec system. I couldn't do that without the written authorization of Consec leader. Mister, this is your authorization. Sit down! Do it now or I'll kill you. Yes, sir, I'm doing it now. I have to finish it over there.
So this is the last step. Are you sure? Do it! There's no need for that. It's all very quiet. It's just internal switching. Really? No one's ever switched off a scanner before. I'll go find the doctor. All right, I'll keep an eye on the door. Excuse me. Do you know if the receptionist is coming back soon? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Thanks. I'll be with you in a few moments. I have to talk to you right now, Doctor. Would you please get out of here? It's about this drug, Dr. Frayne. I understand you've been prescribing it to some patients. Excuse me. I'll be back in just a moment. Just relax. 
Read a magazine. Where did you get this? What do you want with me? Who are you? What happened? I was scared. The woman in the in the waiting room. She scanned you? No, not her. Her child. Her unborn child scanned me. That's what the right program is. The doctors on the computer list are giving ephemeral to their pregnant patients. I don't understand. Ephemeral. Uh, ephemeral is creating new scanners. Uh, 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 Hold still. Oh, God. Hold still. Oh, God. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, my God. Come on. Oh, God. Let's get out of here. Come on, you can make it. Come on. Kim. Kim. Bill. room. She'll be awake in a few hours. We don't want anyone in here with us. This is just between you and me. Where's your partner Keller? He should be here. Keller? Seems he died when you blew up his computer. And by the way, that was very impressive. Keller murdered Dr. Ruth. He deserved to die. Shouldn't mourn the good doctor's death. You should celebrate it with me. Dr. Ruth was a great man. He tried to help us. He helped me. Great man. There's only one person on earth who ever tried to help you, and that's me. You? You sent your soldiers out to kill me. Never. Never you. I've spent years looking for you. And then when Keller told me that Ruth had dredged you up and sent you out as some ridiculous amateur spy, I tried to take care of you, look after you, guide you to me. Now, why would you try to do that? Who's your mother? I don't know. Who's your father? I don't know. What was your first childhood memory? I don't have any. No. You don't, and it's no accident that you don't. You were kept on ice. It wasn't until Consec had trouble putting me away that they thawed you out. You've been monitored every day of your life, allowed to live like garbage, scum. He knew where you were, but it wasn't until he needed you that he reached down and hauled you up out of the slime. Who? Your father, Dr. Paul Ruth. Our father. No. You're my brother, Cameron. My kid brother. No. Sit down. I want to show you something. This was a test campaign used in 1947 to market a new product. The product was a drug, a tranquilizer called ephemeral. It was aimed at pregnant women. If it had worked, it would have been marketed all over North America. But the campaign failed, and the drug failed, because it had a side effect on the unborn children. 
an invisible side effect. It created scanners? Yes. The man who invented ephemeral was very excited by this weird mutation it caused. And so was Consec. They offered to finance his experiments. So he sold him his company and himself. And that man was Dr. Ruth. That was Daddy. Now, I said that the side effects of ephemeral were invisible, but that's not completely true. Daddy could see them. He could see them in us. He had given the prototype of ephemeral to his pregnant wife, our mother, four years before it hit the market, and then again a year later. His children turned out to be difficult until he realized that the only thing that would calm them down was his drug, ephemeral. That's why we're older than all the others. Not only older, more powerful. The rest of them, they're nothing compared to us. Then what did you need Keller for? Consec had hardware. It had contacts. Keller could see the future. The future? You murdered the future. That's negative, Cam. Defeatist. Disappoints me to hear you talk that way. You're starting to sound like them. There's a whole generation of scanner soldiers just a few months away from being born. We'll find them, train them to be like us, not like Obers and their band of cripples. We'll bring the world of normals to their knees. Rule an empire so brilliant, so glorious, we'll be the envy of the whole planet. You sound just like him, like Ruth. No, not like him. Like Rack! Daryl Rack! No. Like him. It's as though he's been reincarnated in you. You're not listening to me. You're not cooperating, Cam. You're not cooperating with me at all. I've been counting on you for years, Cameron. Tell me you're not going to betray me like all the rest. Tell me you're not. No! <clears throat> all right. We're going to do it the scan away. I'm going to suck your brain dry. Everything you are is going to become me. You're going to be with me, Cameron, no matter what. After all, brothers should be close, don't you think? Mm -hmm.
Reverend? Kim? It's me, Kim. Cameron. I'm here. We've won. We've won.